This is what the Lord says about his word, that it will not go out and return to him void, but it shall accomplish and it shall prosper. So we must ready ourselves to receive the word of the Lord. Our preaching theme for this year is health, wellness, and fitness. We want to look at the scripture then today at Exodus chapter 15, beginning with verse 22. You'll find these words. And Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And they came to Marah, and when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it is called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree which, when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that, which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, where were twelve wells of water and threescore and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this opportunity that you've got, given us to gather together in this your holy presence. And for that we tell you thank you. We pray, Lord, that our worship and our praise of you this day will be acceptable in your sight. We confess and repent of our sin and ask that you will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Speak then, Lord, to us that we will have an ear to hear and a mind to be obedient to your word. Have your way, Lord, in this place, that you be glorified. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray, and the church said amen. 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 From the uh, passage that has been read, Exodus 15, verse number 26, the last phrase, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. We want to preach the word uh, of God today, church, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. The Lord God, Yahweh Elohim, made man, and in his infinite wisdom and sovereign purpose, he made us body, soul, and spirit. We are clearly his deliberate divine design. Consequently, our health, wellness, and fitness is important to our maker. Water composes approximately 60% of our body. Proper functioning of our brain heart, lungs, kidneys, skin, muscles, bones, depends in large part on our water intake. Water aids in digestion, stabilizing our body temperature, and ridding the body of fil filtered waste. When we do not drink enough water, dehydration sets in. Feeling thirsty is the body's natural signal that it needs water. Failure to respond affirmatively to thirst and ultimately dehydration can have an adverse effect on our health and wellness. The background of our text today, we find that God has brought his covenant people out of Egyptian bondage. Exodus 13 specifically says that God led them, highlight God led them. 
But it says that God led them not through the near way. So God led them, and then God did not take the shortcut. Y'all in here with me today, John? But that the Lord went and led them through the way of the wilderness. The Lord went before them by day as a pillar of cloud and by night as a pillar of fire to give them light. God then leads them across the Red Sea, miraculously walking on dry ground. And by the way, do you know that Pharaoh and his army got drowned? That brings us to our text there today. Verse 22 picks up and tells us they are now three days' journey into the wilderness, and they find no water. Let's pause there. The wilderness is a place that it is uh, sometimes referred to as a desert place. It's hot in the wilderness. And it's rocky in the wilderness. They are walking by foot, on foot. They are traveling. And not only that, but they are traveling as a unit. They have both Young and old. And everyone in between. And sometimes when traveling with those of us who are older, we need frequent stops. We need to be able to rest and stretch our legs more now than maybe we once did. Once upon a time, you could get in the car and drive from here to there non-stop. But as you get older, you find that you need to rest your body. Well, not only do they have to be concerned about the older ones, but then there were the younger ones. And anybody that's ever traveled and you got children in the car with you, you know that's a challenge in and of itself. So now they are, they are walking in this wilderness this hot, this rocky place with old and young. They are carrying their possessions. Whatever it was that God allowed them to have that they brought out of Egypt with them, they are carrying what they have as they walk. They also have whatever livestock they may have had, whatever sheep or goats or cattle that they had possession of. All of this caravan is now moving through the wilderness. They march three days in the wilderness and find no water. Well, it's natural to, to think that uh, at some point they will begin to get tired. And that fatigue will set in and that they need to be refreshed so they keep walking with the Lord. And now the scripture in verse 23 says they come tomorrow. And if you walk with them today, church, can you see that they, they notice that there's some water up ahead? Do you think they're getting excited right now? Long journey, three days thus far, and haven't found any water. Hot out there in the wilderness, in the desert. Got young, got old, got possessions. They are trying their best, walking with the Lord. They come tomorrow and they see water, but there's a problem. The Bible says that when they get to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara because they are bitter, undrinkable. That's somewhat of an oxymoron then when you say that about water, undrinkable water. So now imagine, if you will, you're there with them. Here's a situation. 
And, and the scripture doesn't tell us why the water was undrinkable. It could have been simply an excess concentration of mineral content. It could have been a contamination or pollution caused by animal or man. But whatever the reason, it was undrinkable. Now, footnote this, they are walking with the Lord, and yet they got to deal with some adversity. Don't that sound like life that they church? The fact that you're on the Lord's side, and the fact that you're walking with the Lord does not immunize us from the vicissitudes of life. Prepare yourself to deal with adversity. Adversity. When things don't go the way we think they ought to go. Adversity. Difficulties and hardships. They're thirsty. And now add disappointed to the equation. But life will have its difficulties, its hardships, its vicissitudes. The question becomes, how do we respond to life when we have to deal with adversity? Y'all going to walk with me a little while today? Because it is critically important to recognize that they are walking with the Lord. And yet, they've got to deal with adversity. What is their attitude? When now confronted with this adversity, well, the Bible tells us very clearly in verse 24, and the people murmured against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? They began to murmur. They began to complain. They began to grumble. When things didn't go the way they thought they ought to go, they started complaining, grumbling, murmuring. Remember I told you earlier, now don't murmur, FAB Church. Understand that when we're walking with the Lord, the Lord got it. We just need to figure out how to walk in the will of God and not start murmuring, complaining, and grumbling when some adversity comes our way. Somebody ought to help me in here today. Well, let me, let me try to come and get you. Because maybe uh, you don't understand how it would have played out for them walking in the wilderness. If they were here with us today, it would play out something like this. They would text one another. They would email one another. They would tweet out to one another. They would get on their podcast and go to talking. Or they would find some way to post on social media what they felt about the situation. Y'all in here with me now? Listen to some of the subject matter that in the sanctified mind, had they been in here with us today, we would find them talking about. First of all, somebody would tweet to someone else. We are here with no water. And the Lord is a pillar of cloud over us. Why don't he just drop a few raindrops and we'll be all right. That's how somebody want to question the situation. As if they know better than God what to do. Y'all in here with me today? Somebody else will post on their web page. We should not have taken this direction. There was a shorter way to get to where we were going. Why are we out here anyhow? Why did he bring us this direction? Yes, they would murmur and they would complain and they would post their murmuring and their complaining. Y'all don't walk with me today, church. Somebody else would on their podcast go to talking. 
And they'll say, well, his GPS ain't working for him. He don't know what the direction is that he ought to be going. Y'all ain't here with me yet, church? They murmur and they complain. Somebody else takes out, well, we don't, why don't we just Google our way? As if Google got all the answers for you. Google is as messed up as the people who put the information on Google are messed up. You can't trust what Google got to say, but every day of the week, 24 hours a day, the Bible is right, and you can trust what thus says the Lord. Y'all going to hear me, church? They murmur. They complain. Somebody emails. Because remember, they complained concerning Moses. Somebody get home and email. Send out an email chain that says, what kind of leader did God saddle us with? What kind of leader will walk and bring us to a place yes, and the water is bitter? Yes, it's one thing that when we found the water, yes, but then we got our hopes up, yes, got to this place, and now we find that the water is bitter. Yes, well, now that's their attitude. But look at Moses' action. Hear what the Bible says. And Moses did what? Cried to the Lord. Moses went to praying. And any leader ought to be praying. Church ought to be a witness in here. Moses started praying. Walk with me. Moses didn't take a poll. Everybody had an opinion. (laughs) And they were not shy in expressing their opinion about the situation. But Moses didn't take a poll to see who was going to agree. Moses went and talked to God about it. And church, that's where your answer is. When you are dealing with adversity in life, and when you are dealing with a situation that it was not of your making, but you are walking with the Lord, you got to go talk to God and ask God, Lord, what would you have me to do now? Well, now, Here's the test for the leader. Yes, the Bible says that the Lord showed Moses yes, a tree. Yes, Lord, <laughs> these folk arguing at me. Yes, they are murmuring. Yes, and they ain't shy yes, about saying how they feel. We need an answer, Lord. And then the Lord answers the prayer (laughs) and shows him a tree. But that when that tree was cast into the water, the waters were made sweet. Y'all in here with me? People who have come up with a filtration system. They would have come up with a water treatment plan. God does more than filter and treat the water. The tree that God chose Moses. And y'all know that don't make normal sense, does it? That don't make human sense. 
to go chop down a tree. Throw it in some bit of water and expect that there'll be some change. But when God is in it, when God has given the direction, what don't make sense to man, God is able, power belongs to God, that God can change any bit of situation. So in your life, if you got some bitter in your situation, let God show you what to do. This, this tree that God shows Moses, this tree doesn't just filter the water, but it purifies the water. Y'all know that there's a difference? Filtering the water, there's still some of that other stuff left in it, just not at a toxic level at that time. But if you drink it over and over and over and over and over and over again, it can even be detrimental. But when God purifies, and not that God just purify it, God took it another step. Glory, hallelujah. This is a prayer church in here. God took it another step, y'all. And he made the water sweet. The church sang that song. Be sweet I knew. Be sweet I knew. Strong clouds may rise. Strong wind may blow. But I tell the world, wherever I go, when I go to the doctor, I tell the world, when I got to go to the hospital, The Lord then speaks to him. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, hear what God says. Then do, and will do that which is right in his sight. And give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes all his statutes he says I will put none of these diseases upon thee wherein I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that healeth thee the Hebrew is Jehovah Rapha he's our healer Scholars tell us that the reference in the preceding verse to that tree cast into the bitter waters is a picture of the tree, the cross of Jesus Christ. There was no answer to the bitter water of sin. And sin will dehydrate you. I can't say it any other way. Sin will dehydrate you and leave you for dead. But when you take the cross of Christ and add it to your bitter life, you'll find that your life is different. That life can still be sweet because Jesus Christ so when you got to deal with adversity in life, know that the Bible says he took the sting out of God and he took victory from the grave. For you, for you, for you, and for you, he did it not for himself, but he did it for 
The cross of Christ is my choice. And I watch this church. And after I make this point, we're going to extend the invitation to discipleship. Yes, sir. Verse 27 says they came to Elam, mm-hmm. where there were 12 wells of water mm-hmm. and three score and ten palm trees. And they encamped there by the water. Yes, sir. So now somebody's question is, well... Why didn't the Lord just take them there to start with? Ask the Lord for yourself. But I can tell you this. The Bible says he took them the way that he wanted to take them so that he could prove them. So that there was some stuff in them that had gotten in them when they were in Egypt. There's some stuff in you that got in you when you were in the world. And sometimes what God is doing is walking you through some situations in life to get the stuff out of you that's in you that you don't acknowledge yourself. But God can show it to you. God got a way of putting that pressure, church. I told you, those people who were tweeting out, talking about something wrong with the Lord's GPS. The Lord knew where the good water was before they got there. The Lord knows where blessings are before you get there. But if he want to take you that way in order to get you over there, the Lord going to take you the way he wants you to go so that when you get there, you are at with some sin. Yeah.